Hello from Singapore, I'm Galinda. Today is May 9th, day 33 of the circuit breaker period. I've always believed if you want to see a person's true character, give them a lot of money, power and alcohol and see how they handle it. I now need to add another item on that list, that is coronavirus. Because of the virus, people's true natures are showing. I don't worry too much about contracting the virus. I use common sense and I practice good personal hygiene. And despite what I do for a living, I made it a point to minimize my contacts with others as much as possible. Not to mention, with all the alcohol, tobacco and other stuff in my blood, there's probably not much room for COVID-19. However, I just digress. Over the past weeks and months, I've had the opportunity to see people at their very best. I've also seen examples to remind me that when it comes to humanity as a whole, my cynicism is well placed. Let's start with the good. We've seen people checking in on their elderly parents or neighbours. We've seen employers deciding to pay their employees their time involuntary away from work. We've seen customers stepping up and patronising their eatery establishments. Teachers across the globe are having car parades so that they can see their students. We have seen other companies who are stepping up to help speed up um, the testing for COVID-19 or to manufacture badly needed equipments for hospitals and care homes, which um, gets us that much closer to getting things under control. But unfortunately, for every flower in the humanity gardens, there are always weeds as well. But who may they be? Well, in my opinion, we have seen people hoarding toilet papers, although most people only use two rolls of toilet paper each week. We've seen on social media and television how these people are grabbing off the stuff off the shelves. That makes you think these people intend to stay indoor until 2025. But then again, these are the same people who would run into a grocery store and leave on the shelves anything that is labelled organic, gluten-free or natural. The next group that could use a whack over the head are the idiots who flock the beaches as soon as restrictions are slightly loosened. You probably have seen the videos and the pictures on social media, but if you missed it, don't worry. I'm sure you'll be reading about it very soon. Now, what is so difficult to understand that you can have coronavirus for up to two weeks before showing any symptoms and that you can pass it on to others. But if it weren't for the fact that these idiots are a danger to the rest of society, I'd care less. But perhaps the biggest group of knuckleheads in all this are the members of the political and chatter classes, particularly those who called the coronavirus a hoax or conspiracy theory. It's been a while since I've seen so many chronic cases of foot-in-mouth disease. But luckily, there is a cure for that going forward. I'd call it thinking before speaking. Or maybe they should just try to social distance themselves from the rest of us for a while. As I said, coronavirus is like alcohol, money and power. And it shows who among us are flowers and who could use a dose of Dettol? Hoo hoo! Today I have ordered from Crystal Jade, which is a renowned um, Chinese restaurant with one Michelin star. And I'm going to reveal what is in the box right now. Ta da! This is Cantonese clay pot rice. Now I'm going to transfer that to my bowl and then I'm going to tell you more about it. I have now transferred it to my bowl and I'm going to add the sauce, drizzle it over. Mm -hmm. And mix it all together. And that is a perfect clay pot rice. Clay pot rice originates from the Cantonese cuisine, but is now popular throughout China. The term generally refers to 
marinated meat and vegetables cooked in one pot. Then drizzled a flavorful sauce, which is the soy sauce I used just now. A perfectly cooked clay pot rice has a great flavor with all the ingredients you see here. Of course, there are many types of clay pot rice. This version that I've ordered contains um, shiitake mushrooms, Chinese mushrooms, Chinese sausages, lap chong, there you go, and pieces of chicken with bones on. Mm. When cooking clay pot rice, the trickiest part is the control of the heat. So all the ingredients are cooked perfectly at the same time. On the flip side, you might end up with uncooked rice on top and burnt rice at the bottom. The rice ending up like porridge or the meat not cooked through. So this is the challenge. And a good clay pot rice, for me, has a little bit of a scent of burnt rice but not pungent. That would be a perfect um, clay pot rice for me because I love to scrap the burnt rice at the bottom of the clay pot. So I'm going to dig into my food now and it smells delicious, I can guarantee that. With the view outside and the perfect sunny weather, this day can't be more perfect.